What you know of some animals may not be true. Some of the cutest, most innocent little critters? They can actually defend themselves better than you might think. These are 20 preys who can defend themselves from predators. Number 20. Rabbits We'll begin with a creature that many think are 100% cute and cuddly, rabbits. But here's a twist. Rabbits aren't as cute as you think. They're one of the more popular pets on the market because they're easy to take care of, and they don't make a whole lot of noise, they aren't the hardest to feed, and so on and so forth. The only real thing that you need to worry about is spooking them in their cages and then nibbling on you as a result. That's their maximum aggression level. Well, not so much though. You see, rabbits are actually a lot more terrifying than you may realize, not the least of which is that they're a cannibal species. Yes, for real, rabbits exert a lot of energy, giving birth to their many spawn, and so at times they'll actually eat their own young in order to get some of that energy back. It's very disgusting. Now, in in terms of the predators that come after them, it's very true that the natural instinct of a rabbit is to flee, not only because they're scared, but because their bodies are built for bounding around and getting out of situations at high speed. However, like many animals out there, if they're cornered, they'll fight, they'll bite, and they'll use the claws that many of you wouldn't expect them to have to strike out. And if push comes to shove, they'll actually use their hind legs to kick an opponent away. One rabbit even defended its home from a snake by jumping onto it and making it clear that it wasn't going to run. So as in all things, it's all about timing and context. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Honeybees at first, this one may seem a little bit obvious. After all, bees have a stinger, or at least the females do, and as many animals and humans can attest, those stings, well, they hurt a whole lot. What's more, despite what the legend says about them, they don't die after stinging something unless it's a human, because that's how their stingers get detached, by stinging the fleshy parts of us and then not being able to get them back. So, if they wanted to go into their basic attacks, a stinger is a good way to go, but as you might have guessed, that doesn't work on everything. Not to mention, they might not get to sting certain predators if they get attacked first. So, that's where tactics like this one, created from the Japanese honeybee, comes into play. You see, this species is well aware that creatures like wasps are a major threat to their hive, and so they've adopted a technique that takes them out in a rather brutal fashion, that being an ambush killing. Now you might think that I'm talking about a wasp getting swarmed by bees that'll sting it constantly until it dies, but that's actually not what happens here. It's much, much worse than that. Rather, they will form a bee ball around the wasp or an other predator, and then flap their wings at such a rate that they send a large amount of heat and carbon dioxide at the creature, and then they end up killing it because they literally can bear to be in that bee ball. That's not just creativity, it's actually terrifying, believe it or not. Not, scientists have been trying to transmit this tactic to other bee species, but it hasn't worked as of yet. And everyone's grateful for that, because we don't want it to be used on us. Number 18. Spiders Spiders are definitely a unique one to have on this list, because as a lot of you may know, they're absolutely predators. In fact, not only are they predators, but they have one of the most well-known tools for getting their prey in the world via their spider webs. Their various venoms that they have in their bodies also make them deadly to most, but like most in the food chain of the world, just because you're a predator to many creatures doesn't mean you're not prey to others. Spiders are constantly hunted by things like birds, mammals, creatures Creatures like bats and even certain insects like the wasps actually go and eat spiders. Now it's all part of the circle of life, and spiders are well aware that they're prey to certain creatures, so they've developed a variety of means to try and get one of those situations. Easily one of the best for them is to hide. Their ability to crawl up and down and around things via their legs and webs makes it so that they have an easy escape route. But when it comes time to get aggressive, they're also able to do that as well, such as when they use their 
venom against foes to make them back off quickly and second guess trying to get to a spider again. Some spiders, like the tarantula, have the ability to use their hairs like barbs so that when a predator tries to touch them, they get a severe pain that doesn't go away easily. And when all else fails, they can also camouflage themselves and try to stay hidden long enough for the predator to just go away. Number 17. Warthog Warthogs are the first prey on this list that you would definitely say are the prey of humans, and many still hunt them today for sport and pleasure, and as a result, they sometimes don't get a reputation for being able to fight back, which is absolutely wrong because they can absolutely fight back, and they do, and that's why hunting them can actually be dangerous. And that's because warthogs have tusks, and they're meant to harm anything that tries to get close to them. What's more, they actually have a set of lower tusks that are small than the ones on top of its face, and those are the ones that can do some serious damage to you. Plus, if you get this thing going at you full speed in a charge, you are very much in trouble. Equally as important, though, is that warthogs know how to be silent, meaning that they could very easily sneak up on you, and then if they perceive you as a threat, they'll bum rush you, and then you could get really maimed and messed up. That doesn't sound like a whole lot of fun. So while a lot of people do like to tout the warthog as being a prize, make no mistake about it, if they go into the wrong situation with one, it'd be harder for the strength struggles that they've ever had. Number 16. Zebras Here's another one that would very easily be defined as classic prey, because when you think of the African savanna, you can very easily picture lions and hyenas going after things like zebras and killing them with almost laughable ease. So thus, they're a prey that isn't able to defend themselves, right? Well, not exactly, because many times, yes, zebras do end up going down easily, but that's also due in part to how predators are that good and are usually able to swarm them so that fleeing is the only option. But Make no mistake, a zebra can and will defend itself, and you won't want to be on the receiving end when it tries. So what can it do, you may ask? Well, the answer is actually a bit more basic than you may think. It simply kicks. It's not a shocker, because a zebra is a kind of horse. But if you think about it, have you ever really seen a zebra kick something? Likely not, and you wouldn't know that it technically has one of the most powerful kicks in all of the world unless you were told. Zoologists say that zebras don't only kick with their legs, instead it looks between its legs in order to accurately place the kick and then bucks and kicks violently with both of its back legs. That's a double barrel shotgun of kicking power and boy does it hurt. Oh and just to give you some context, some humans have actually gotten kicked by zebras in the past and it didn't go too well for them. Now they really didn't walk very well afterwards if you get my drift. So maybe in the future everyone and every creature should just leave zebras alone. Number 15. Giraffes Giraffes are easily one of the most majestic creatures out there in the world. Their whole bodies are something special, mainly because they look like literally nothing else in the world, and yet are perfectly adapted to the parts that the creature lives in. But because of its abnormal shape and the fact that it kind of lives on high, you can see how predators like lions or hyenas are not able to only spot them, but to also make quick work out of them if they're able to get the jump. That's all true and fine, but that doesn't mean that they aren't able to put up a fight. Giraffes have two main methods of fighting off not only predators, but foes on their level. For example, not unlike the zebra, a giraffe does have a very powerful kick. The twist being that it's with its front feet, and according to some scientists, that front kick is powerful enough to be able to kill a lion. That's definitely not something that you're going to expect from a creature like this one. The second thing is that it has to defend itself. It uses its neck. Are you confused? Well, you should look up giraffe fight, and then you'll see clips like these two giraffes going at it by literally beating each other up about their heads and their necks. It almost looks like a dance at times, but you can tell that they're throwing their necks at high speeds. Plus, a giraffe is known to charge vehicles if they're in the right mood, so you don't immediately have to assume that a giraffe is going to be nice to you if you come up to one, and it's best just to be cautious and play it safe. Number 14. Buffalo 
Buffaloes are another creature that's honestly kind of known for being hunted more than it is for fighting back. Now granted, we all know not to mess with the buffalo stampede, but picking them off one at a time has been a hunting tradition for centuries by both animals and humans. In Africa, the African buffalo is at times infamous for how lions are able to get the jump on them and then go to town on them until they're dead. And given how hefty a buffalo can be, you can very easily imagine how many meals that the lions get from these beasts. However, as you're expecting, buffaloes do have a way to fight back. For example, they know that at most times they need to travel together because if they don't, the lions are going to pick them off. That's why families stay in the herd and try not to wander away. But if they do want to get aggressive, they turn the tables on the lions by getting a sneak attack on them. First off, buffaloes can be awake for all but two hours out of the day and be completely fine, meaning that lions already have a disadvantage. And then, lions do sleep a lot. So what the buffaloes will do is actually attack a sleeping lion and force them to scatter, thus thinking twice before attacking the herd. I'm pretty sure that's not how the lyrics to the lion sleeps tonight goes, but I don't think that the buffaloes actually care about or know the song. Number 13. Gazelles. For all of you lions out there that may be watching the video, you know who you are. We apologize for likely making you very hungry. It just so happens that a lot of the animals that you hunt are perfect for the list. Gazelles are another one that, as a whole, are known for their running abilities, like many animals out there, and they also have the ability to run fast enough to get away from a predator at times. But in times of crisis, they can change things up and actually turn the tables to attack. Don't forget that they have horns, and those horns can be anywhere up to 14 inches long, which is more than enough to impale a predator, especially one that isn't expecting an attack like this. They also are so evolved and knowing of their place on the food chain that they've adapted to a system that ensures that they warn the others if danger is coming and where it's coming from. It's clever when you think about it because they want the pack to survive, so running away together is the best option in most cases. This is another thing that sometimes gets forgotten with creatures like gazelles. They've had to endure being hunted for a very, very long time, and so they've adapted to make sure that they can escape or at least that they can fight back if time and ability is right. It may not always work, but the last time I checked, being alive is a cause that's worth fighting for. Number 12, Elephants. Well, this one, I admit, is kind of a stretch in terms of this creature being prey, because in truth, most animals in the world can't or won't attack an elephant due to their girth and the mighty bulk that they wield. However, when it comes to creatures like humans, they don't really care about their size or families and things like that. Humans are going to kill them, and if the elephants don't kill them first. You see, elephants live most of the time in families, mainly the females due to some genetic stuff that I'm not going to get into, and the females Females do what they can to not only protect their group, but also ensure that the young ones stay safe overall. As such, one of the best deterrents against a foe is that of just being a good leader and ensuring that people know when danger is coming. Then, when they do notice the danger, they can either flee or take action. For the purposes of this video, let's just say that they choose violence. First off, they can charge right at you, and with your size compared to theirs, you're going to lose every single time. Secondly, they have both their tusks and their trunks that they can use to do all kinds kinds of serious damage to you, your vehicle, and anything else that's precious to you. And finally, if they really wanted to, they could just step on you and you'd be dead due to all that weight literally crushing down on you. Elephants can be easy to kill if you've got the right stuff, but most people or animals don't have the right stuff. Number 11. Porcupine. The next creature on my list is actually one who's evolved so well that calling it a prey would be a bit of a stretch because you'd be very brave or even very stupid to actually go and mess with one of these things. The porcupine's body is covered in quills, like seriously, they're everywhere, and thus going near this thing at any point is very dangerous.
These quills have very sharp barbs on the ends, and if a porcupine feels threatened, it's going to raise its quills in a defensive posture. Yeah, exactly. These porcupines have their defense mechanism ready to go at any moment, so if a predator does try to attack, they're going to get poked, and it'll take some outside intervention in order to get the quills out. That's a very good deterrent to keep a foe away. After all, would you really want to be stuck with one of those things in your body for any length of time? Not even a little. Oh, and it should be noted that trying to remove one of the quills is going to hurt quite a bit. So whether you're an animal or a human, or even both, you should definitely keep the porcupine off of your wish list for a pet. They're going to be a bit more tough to take care of for you than you're probably hoping. Or, you know, go and get one and see how you like pricked fingers and other body parts. Number 10. Wildebeest. The wildebeest does have a certain protection from predators that others honestly don't, that being the numbers advantage. They're in fact the most abundant big game species in eastern Africa, and when you have the numbers on your side, you use them to your advantage. So just imagine, if you will, say, a stampede deep in the gorge, with a young lion caught in their crosshairs. That wouldn't spell good things for that young lion or for its father that races to its rescue. And though they are prey to many species of predator in Africa, they have horns that they can actually challenge others with and are known to challenge one another in order to settle disputes that involve territory. All in all, wildebeests are very capable of fighting predators when they're in the right position or in the right numbers. So make sure that you're not on the wrong end of one of their strikes. Number 9. Rhinoceros the rhinoceros are another species where it's a bit difficult to quantify them as being prey to anything but humans who try to shoot them for both a prize and for their ivory horns. But despite rhinos being nearly extinct amongst many of their species, a trend that thankfully many are trying to correct, it is very true that they are creatures that you wouldn't want to mess with for a variety of reasons, not the least of which is that they're not afraid to gore you if they do feel provoked. But here's the thing, rhinos are very very aware of how lumbering that they are, but they've turned that into an advantage that can make things, well, complicated for those who are observing them. For example, rhinos want to make sure that they can defend themselves against threats, so much so that they actually rub their horns against rough objects like trees in order to try and sharpen them. It's said that rhino horns are able to pierce actual other rhinos, so that would very much make them capable of killing a predator. What's more, they're infamous at times for their poor eyesight, and if they think they see something encroaching on their territory, they're going to straight up charge at it. It doesn't matter if it's a friend, a foe, or even a tree, they're going to ram it and cause some serious damage. Rhinos are massive creatures with a literal point to stick you with, so don't get on their bad side. Number 8. Hippopotamus this one is very much a public service announcement about the biggest kind, because there are still people out there who don't realize that the hippopotamus is actually one of the most dangerous creatures on the planet, and I'm kind of weirded out that they can't take the hint not to screw with them. First and foremost, like the rhino, a hippopotamus is very big and a bulky creature. They can weigh thousands of pounds, and that alone makes them dangerous. Secondly, they're actually quite fast, to the extent that they can easily race through the water and on land in order to get to what they feel is their target. They've knocked over boats, caused stampedes, and then when all else has failed, they actually use their incredible bite powers to chomp a human in half. It did happen, and you should look it up. But don't go play with a hungry, hungry hippo. That is unless you're the one who wants to be eaten. Number 7. Tortoises. Here's a creature that most people would say, oh, that thing can't defend itself. And for the most part, you'd be right that tortoises are known more for their defense than their offense. Their shells are incredibly durable, as long as they're not flipped upside down to expose their underbelly. And many times, the size of the tortoise is what makes it hard to get to it if it's retracted into the shell. 
but believe it or not, they do have a way of defending themselves against predators and even other tortoises. Yes, these things like to go after one another in the mating season, so they'll use a protrusion known as their galar horn, all in order to flip their shells over and make it easier for them to handle. Plus, like turtles, they have a nice snapping jaw that they can use to bite down on predators should the need arise. So don't underestimate these tortoises because they have more skills than people may give them credit for. Number six, lizards. Lizards as a whole is a fascinating species because they can come in various sizes and colors, and as a result of that, they have a variety of abilities to ward off a predator that tries to come after them. One of their more classic methods is hissing. They'll make noises that will get the predator to think twice about attacking them, and they also have skin flaps at times that they can use to expand in order to make themselves seem bigger, and as a result, it wards the predator off. Their tails have also been a classic tool for them to use. Some of them are actually able to detach their tails as an escape method, or they'll use them to literally whip their opponents away. There are a few that even have spines on their tails that can cause some serious damage. So the ultimate option? Well, just become a Komodo dragon and just be the predator yourself. Number five, Pangolin. Have you ever heard the phrase, the best offense is a good defense? Well, that is the embodiment of what the pangolin is. This very unique creature is one that honestly does not attack a predator with offense, but however, it does it with defense. You see, its whole body is covered in scales that are basically like armor, like the literal kind, so much so that even lions and hyenas have a hard time breaking through when the pangolin goes into defense mode. And I do mean that literally as well. The pangolin literally translates to one that rolls up. When threatened, it's going to roll up into a ball that allows its entire body to be covered by its scales, and as such, the predators will well and truly hurt themselves in order to try and pierce the skin. Number four, frogs. Going back to more typical animals for a moment, there are a lot of creatures that do try to pick on frogs, mainly because frogs are usually small, not very aggressive, but if you mess with a frog, you should do it at your own risk. Because these creatures have adapted in order to ensure that they can handle predators, or at the very least, trick them. They'll use their voices to try and sound more loud and thus bigger and more intimidating, and they've altered their body colors to appear as though they're a threat or even hurt the predator's eyes. Eyeballs. They'll use voice mimicry and high-pitched screams to ward off foes, and when all else fails, some of them even have poison that'll straight up kill any foe that tries to eat them. You might be familiar with the poison dart frog, and that frog is actually coated with poison, and the creatures of its habitat know that and leave it alone. Number three, sea urchins. Sea urchins definitely are not a creature that you would think about all the time, but they're arguably one of the creatures who have been able to create one of the ultimate defense mechanisms against predators by literally surrounding themselves with spines that are poisonous. But wait, there's more! Nestled around the sea urchin's thorns are hundreds of tiny jaws, and when launched from the animal's body, they're capable of biting and releasing toxins. The urchins grow these as a kind of anti-fish defense, and it's not something that they use all the time, but when they do use it, it absolutely works. And that's why you don't want to go anywhere near these things in the water or on the land. Number two, horned lizards. Now, I've already talked about lizards, but this one's actually special. Horned lizards have a trick for predators all their own that is both very effective and also quite disgusting. Simply put, they shoot blood at predators to try and get them to back off, but it's a little bit more odd than it already sounds. Because the lizards, well, they shoot that blood from their eyeballs. And they only use this trick against creatures like bobcats and coyotes due to how they apparently hate the taste of blood. That's right, these lizards actually actually squirt their own blood into the mouths of these predators, and it works because they hate the taste. And you thought the animal kingdom couldn't get any more weird, right? Number 1. Peacock Flounder 
The peacock flounder is a kind of fish that very much knows its pecking order in the waters that it lives in, and by that I mean that the fish knows that when it comes to the predators that come for it, it can't fight back, so it does what many prey do and actually hides in the best ways that it can. In fact, the peacock flounder has multiple methods for trying to camouflage itself so that the predator cannot get to it. That includes changing the color of its body to match the ocean floor, or even in a pinch, diving into a bit of sand in order to blend in that way. I've shown you a variety of ways that animals can fight back against those who are hunting them, but the truth is, many actually prefer this path of least resistance because they know that if the predator just leaves them alone, they'll survive to live another day. And that's all from the realm of animals who are a lot more tough than you might realize. Does hearing about any of these animals and how they defend themselves against predators make you appreciate them more, or does it change how you look at the animal kingdom as a whole? And are there any other animals who can defend themselves against predators? in aggressive ways that should be on this list. Be sure to let me know all about it in the comments section down below. Check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.